uh, manifolds um, or uh, even some more general algebraic setting. And, um, but before, before explaining this, uh, there is like a shortcut version of this, which is a bit similar to the Aker set theory, uh, but in the Hamiltonian setting. And uh, it has also similar pitfalls. And in, in fact, uh, uh, even worse, because one needs a Hamiltonian extension of Hamiltonian doesn't always exist. So uh, in this context, we, 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 we Sasha, we found um, some uh, complex governing it. But then we, we restart uh, here in a very general setting where uh, you start from a resolution uh, of an ideal in, 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 a mod, in, in a ring and it's a resolution just as a module, which for example, always exists if the, the ring is, is Noetherian. And we construct some, some uh, very, quite nice algebraic resolution um, using uh, some kind of decorated trees. And this will permit us then in the last part to get a full uh, cohomological description of also these uh, reductions uh, from this setting. And um, one should get even from, from other parts of the cohomology uh, of this BFB settings, uh, some further invariants. But all this is work in progress uh, with uh, Hari Nahari and uh, Sasha Hancharov from, from Lyon, uh, and uh, in part also together with Camille uh, from Metz. So, what are hypersome manifolds uh, and what is the motivation for it? As mentioned, it's, it's about the idea to, to generalize constrained systems to the singular setting, so motivated by the notion of singular foliations, what it would be uh, here. So one has to imagine some sub-manifold C in uh, a Poisson manifold or symplectic manifold in, in, in its motivation part, P omega, such that the vanishing ideal of this sub-manifold is a Poisson subalgebra. So that means it's another way of saying it's a quasitropic submanifold, or in the terminology of the Iraq, it's a first class constraint system. So, what is the definition of an I Poisson manifold? So, it's a Poisson manifold, uh, P with the Poisson bracket, uh, together with an ideal in the functions, which is locally finitely generated. So, this is an important technical assumption that we'll explain soon why it's important. Uh, such that I is a Poisson subalgebra. So that's this notion. And uh, now, in, in the context of quasitropic submanifolds, uh, there is this uh, notion of symplectic reduction, which is the second part of what we are interested in. So, uh, because of IC being this vanishing ideal, being as forming a Poisson subalgebra, it's Hamiltonian. Uh, vector fields are tangential to these leaves, and uh, pr provided uh, the leaf space on C of this foliation is smooth, then uh, this leaf space carries a natural symplectic structure, and uh, this is the reduced uh, phase space or the reduced uh, symplectic manifold. And it is not completely difficult to see that the functions on this. Uh, reduced space, provided it exists, can be described uh, in this way as written here. So here n is the Poisson normalizer of this ideal IC and your quotient by IC. Essentially, this means these are uh, functions which along the leaf, like which, which outside the leaves don't ma matter. This is this quotient, but it's a function which are invariant along these leaves. So this was the second part of the motivation. So let's look again now at the more general setting with this hypersome manifold. Let's define this normalizer. So these are functions on the Poisson manifold such that for any functions in the ideal, uh, this Poisson bracket stays in the ideal. Uh, it is um, quite easy to see by, by the Leibniz rule of the Poisson bracket that this becomes a Poisson algebra. And um, so uh, now, now there are two definitions. One is uh, if I have 
a, a function in this normalizer H. So uh, we, we call it the Hamiltonian and this iposome manifold dynamical. So this is the situation you have in, in the usual physical context where uh, this I uh, can be generated by some constraints and H is the Hamiltonian of the system. And uh, H being in here is just a statement that it is gauge invariant. And uh, this, this Poisson algebra here, which exists uh, in the algebraic setting uh, always, uh, even if the reduced manifold R uh, is, does not exist and even has a Poisson bracket, uh, th this we call the reduction together. And if you have some Hamiltonian, then we take its uh, equivalence class inside here uh, as uh, the reduction. Now, uh, why do we need this uh, finitely generated property? Um, so th there's the following proposition. So if you look at the flow of uh, Ham the Hamiltonian vector field of such a Hamiltonian H, then it does preserve the ideal. So I assume here for simplicity that the Hamiltonian is complete. Otherwise, one needs to modify this statement correspondingly to something local. But uh, the, the spirit is the same. So this, uh, the, the flow of any element, uh, any Hamiltonian vector field of an element in uh, the normalizer uh, generates, uh, uh, preserves the ideal. And uh, like there's a non-example where you see how important this uh, finitely generated is. So take just the cotangent bundle of the line, take the ideal of functions, which are such that the functions and all its derivatives vanish on the right-hand side uh, of this two-plane. So for any x uh, big O equal to zero, um, this is not finitely generated. Uh, now, if you take uh, the momentum uh, function, it is evidently inside the normalizer of this uh, ideal because it just produces a derivative. It's Hamiltonian vector field is just a derivative with respect to x. And uh, so it, it stays inside j. But uh, if flow evidently does not preserve j because, uh, I mean, this just moves the point uh, x equals zero uh, around, right? So this is a very simple example where you see that. Uh, this is, is not this proposition, which sounds very natural, is not not, not for granted. But in the case when it's fi locally finally generated, uh, one can establish it. So that that is uh, the notion and uh, of, of of the of the objects. And the question is, what are what is a good notion of morphisms? And so suppose you have a, a map phi between two Ipsilon manifolds. So you want it to be a smooth map. And uh, one thing is you want, essentially you wanted the pullback because it's nicely behaved. So the pullback maps uh, the ideal here into the ideal here, uh, the same thing for the normalizers. And then there's a third condition, which is the usual condition for a Poisson map. So, but the difference of these two operations, meaning like first taking Poisson brackets and then taking the pullback or vice versa uh, doesn't need to vanish, but it only needs to lie inside the ideal I1. Now let's see uh, what is yield. So suppose we, we take just the ideals equal to zero, then uh, this condition uh, is automatically satisfied. So zero is licensed at zero, the normalize are all functions. So the pullback of functions lie inside the functions. Sure, so that's one and two is automatic. And if this is zero, we just recover usual Poisson maps. The other extreme case, if we take um, I1 and I2, all possible functions, then this becomes completely empty as it's very easy to see. So I1 and I2 and as n of I2 and n of I1 are all functions. So again, the first two conditions are empty. And uh, since now here we have all functions, there's no condition on the on these brackets, on the Poisson brackets. So th this definition, on the other hand, is, is optimal in the following sense, namely that the, the, the pullback F phi star induces a map of um, a morphism of uh, the 
re reduced Poisson algebras. So, uh, all right. So, yeah, the the the, the, fir the first uh, the first two conditions are needed, such that this even does define such a map, and uh, since we quotient by I one, this becomes a Poisson map. Okay, so this is the first part of the first half. And uh, next, I we look at some examples. So we, we start with a single affoliation on a manifold M. So this we abbreviate as SF, which by definition is a submodule of the vector fields on this manifold M, which is locally finitely generated and closed with respect to the Lie bracket. And uh, if in addition, you have a, a Riemannian metric given on this manifold M, then you require this condition here so that for any uh, vector field in this uh, single affoliation, the lead derivative um, lies inside the following space of symmetric two tensors. So here's an arbitrary one form. And here you take uh, the image of the single affiliation with respect to the musical isomorphism induced by the metric. And this is the, not the our notation for symmetric tensor product. So- May I ask something, Thomas? Sure. Uh, G, is that a Riemannian metric on M or is right. it a, a metric on the normal bundle of affiliation? No, 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 just on M. On M, okay, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Three rem remarks. First of all, if you have a single affiliation in this sense, then uh, you get a decomposition of the manifold into uh, leaves of possibly different different dimensions. It's also important that uh, this this um, module carries more information than just the leaf decomposition. Think, for example, of all vector fields vanishing to some particular order at the origin of R n then um, this is a single affiliation because it's finitely generated, the Lie brackets uh, closed, but the order uh, and, 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 the, and the leaf space just consists of two leaves except for R1, where it's three leaves and uh, just the origin and the, the remainder. And, um, but still this order K is, uh, characterizes also this uh, single affiliation. And now, um, there is a traditional notion of a singular Riemannian affiliation in the setting of such a single affiliation as a leaf space. And this is that if you have now such a single affiliation as, as a leaf decomposition on a Riemannian manifold, then you require that geodesics which start orthogonal to one leaf stay orthogonal to all leaves. Um, Okay, that, 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 that's, a, that's a possible definition of it. And um, so, so we, we would call a geometric single Riemannian affiliation a single affiliation in this sense, together with a Riemannian metric on M such that this property for the induced leaf space is satisfied. And uh, so, 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 so together with Alexei Kotov, we could prove this direction. Um, but it, it, it turns out that uh, the other direction um, is not always satisfied, at least depending on kind of category you, you, you choose for the, the modular functions. So we, we, we could, we've had to prove it for uh, some singular uh, foliation R16, where uh, on each 15 sphere, it's the octonic hop vibration. And uh, if you restrict to, uh, real analytic uh, functions, then this um, this uh, is a geometric singular Riemannian affiliation, but that doesn't exist an analytic modular singular Riemannian affiliation. So th th there are many interesting questions in this context, uh, which one can also talk about, but but not today. So that's not the focus of the talk today. So I make it just as a remark. Um, now let us come back to this hypersome manifold. Suppose you have now a Riemannian manifold, then you always can get it the standard Hamiltonian on the cotangent bundle. Similarly, if you have a single affiliation, or no, actually no, if you have a, a, a submodule of vector fields on M, 
So vector fields on M are fiber linear functions on the cotangent bundle. So um, I can view uh, this F as a subset of these fiber linear functions in here, which generates an ideal inside all functions, which I call IF. Now, the proposition is that uh, even if this is just a submodule of C infinity of M, then MF is a, a single affiliation if and only if uh, the cotangent bundle of M together with this ideal is an hypersome manifold. And if in addition, you have um, a metric G and here you take the induced Hamiltonian on the cotangent bundle, uh, then this, the statement is, this is a module SRF if and only if this is a dynamical life so many fold. So that's a kind of dictionary. And I, I, I particularly like this second part about HG because it gives a very nice uh, definition of um, or showing kind of the, the condition of the compatibility of the metric, uh, which before was written uh, in this form here, which is still maybe slightly intransparent becomes extremely natural just by saying that uh, HG is in the normalized of IF. Uh, Thomas, uh, I, I suppose this first isomorphism also respects uh, morphisms. Sorry? The, the, the first isomorphism uh, that you have between single affiliations and I passant. Uh, 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 that is a very, very good morphism. question. Actually, that's a very good question. So actually, we don't really know yet well what are the, the morphisms of this category. That's a project, an ongoing project to find a good notion. We have some reduced version if you like restrict to submersions or something. Um, in that case, uh, yes. But uh, actually, uh, one even needs to make sense of it. One needs to introduce some auxiliary metrics to, um, to, 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 to induce from here. Uh, a map, uh, like you have a map between two manifolds, how do you get one between two cotangent bundles? So we introduce some adequate metrics and uh, such that it becomes a Riemannian submersion. And uh, then it's actually an Ipoisson uh, map only. And it becomes a Poisson map if this Riemannian submersion is flat. That's a, it's a proposition, if and only if. So that's a good question, but but yeah, so we, we really don't know yet the good, the, the right notion here. So that's something we're working on. So it should be such that since since you ask, so so here we have this uh, statement with Camille and Lavon, uh, La, um, uh, Sylvain Laveau, uh, that uh, under some conditions, single affiliations have the infinity algebraids uh, as uh, kind of, universally associated to them that locally uh, this any morphism should lift to such a Lee infinity morphism. But for Lee, the existence of Lee infinity morphisms, there are in principle are infinitely many uh, obstructions and one needs to prove that with a good notion, with just a few uh, conditions, you've, you prove that all of them can be lifted. So that's the project. Uh, Thomas, can I ask you one thing too? Yep. Uh, it's about existence. Maybe you're going to say something about that later, but it's say in the Poisson case, if you take uh, the associated uh, foliation, when does it exist such a metric? Do you know? Which, which foliation? You take the, so if you have a Poisson manifold, there is associated a foliation to it, a singular foliation. The model is given by taking the, say, pi sharp of the, the, the one forms. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and now the question is whether, when, when do such metrics exist that make into a single remaining variation in the sense of the model definition? Okay, but this is not the situation here, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Uh... I'm just trying to grasp whether that's a very strong thing or... Essentially, it means that... Um... It, 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 it's something like actually in another way of, um, I mean, the, the, the geometric one, another way of saying it essentially is that there is locally a, a distance between the leaves locally. Right. Uh, in so, the geometric so, case, I think I understand, but I was asking about in the, in the module. What, exactly. What is stronger about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's discuss it in some other case. I think that's an interesting question. And uh, I would be also quite interested in your opinion about this. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Good. So uh, there is a, uh, a definition uh, of Morita equivalence or house of Morita equivalence as um, it was called by Marco with his former student, uh, Marco Zambon. And uh, this is as follows. So um, two singular foliations are Morita equivalent if there is another manifold N with uh, two subjective submersions. Uh, there's an important conditions that the fibers need to be connected. Uh, and such that uh, this notion of pullback foliations coincides. So here one in principle needs to define what these are, but let me just say it like this. So you have this submodule here, look at vector fields on N, which are projectable and their image lies inside F1. Okay, so, and then uh, all such vector fields generate over the functions here, a new single foliation. So it's, it's, it's not just projective vector fields, but they generate it. And uh, the, the, these are these pullback foliations and they have to coincide. And what um, Gamindia and uh, Zambon showed is that Morita equivalent singular foliations have homomorphic leaf spaces. So this, uh, I think in general, the Morita equivalence is supposed to capture like transverse to the leaf uh, geometry. And uh, that is kind of the minimal thing one wants. So we adapted this to the context of uh, uh, singular Riemannian foliations. So uh, we, we, we now have additional metrics. They satisfy uh, this module version of single Riemannian foliations. We now say that we have an addition on N uh, a, a metric H such that these subjective submersions are Riemannian submersions. And uh, we have also one conditions of, of completeness so that like geodesics can be lifted always to geodesics here at each point so that you don't lose some point here. Uh, and then, uh, then we call these like singular Riemannian foliations Morita equivalents. And uh, then the theorem of um, Gamendian and Sambon can be uh, extended in the following way that uh, this homomorphism which they constructed preserves uh, the distance uh, defined by some quasi-metric, which can be defined in different ways. But in the case, for example, when the, the, the quotients, uh, the quotients of M with respect, when the leaf space here of this single affiliation is smooth, then this G1 indu induces uh, a Riemannian metric on it. And then uh, these two Riemannian manifolds would be isometric or isomorphic. Uh, what is also slightly more tricky in the context of metrics is to prove that this is really an equivalence relation because one needs to play a bit with the metric uh, to, to, to construct the metric on the, uh, in, in the, for the trans, to prove transitivity. So now uh, the main application. So suppose you have two uh, Morita equivalent singular foliations, then uh, take the uh, take this, the corresponding um, Ipersol manifolds and uh, their reductions are isomorphic. So these reductions are algebraic, um, Poisson algebras in particular, and I will give actually two examples of them below just to get some feeling for them. Uh, so they, they are thus uh, some algebraic invariants of Morita equivalents um, and um, and if this is a singular Riemannian foliations, you have also an equivalent, I mean, an isomorphism of the classes of the Hamiltonians, which corresponds uh, in the smooth setting to the metric on this reduced, um, on the space of, um, of, of, of leaves. So ju just two examples uh, of what these reduced algebras are. So suppose you have like a just a real line and you look at vector fields which vanish at least to order k for some uh, k in n. Um, then uh, the reduced algebra, for example, takes this form. So there are like uh, k, um, k minus one elements, uh, but multiplied by arbitrary functions of the momenta. And uh, you get, uh, there's an induced Poisson bracket on this, uh, just coming from X and P. 
being conjugate to one another. So one, one, one notices, for example, that this does depend on K, whereas like the isotropy Lie algebras would not. So this gives some kind of not completely uh, stupid invariant, even if this is a very simple example. A slightly more involved example is if you take uh, the cotangent bundle of R3 and you, you look at uh, rotation at the, the moment, the, like C being the, the, the pre-image of zero under the momentum map. Um, so this is also singular reduction. And I, I here for simplicity, I, I uh, we, we restrict to the polynomial setting, then uh, the reduced Poisson algebra uh, can be identified with, uh, maybe I should write identified here, identified with um, uh, like essentially functions on SL2R star, so which are like polynomial functions. So these are like uh, elements in S dot of SL2R uh, with the multiplication of polynomials, which is just a tensor, symmetrized tensor product and induced Poisson bracket from SL2R Lie algebra, uh, quotiented by the only Casimir, the ideal generated by the only Casimir here. So that is, uh, for example, this gives two examples. And uh, in, in the C infinity setting, it seems slightly more complicated, but we're trying to figure this out. So I think this already, yeah, this finishes the, the first, first part. So if there are questions, uh, one can ask. Okay, so um, so in, in, in the BFV setting, uh, so I, I just recall like uh, very briefly as a step zero, uh, what are the, the standard data of um, uh, BFV uh, formulations? So this is a graded manifold together with a degree zero symplectic form, a degree one and a degree zero function which satisfy these conditions one and two. So these are like the master equations. So this is like in BV, we have just one master equation in the it's Hamiltonian counterpart. We have two of them, there's also this one. There are some more conditions like for example, that H B of V should be some appropriate extension of H and, um, and more things and, uh, but, in principle, ideally, one would like to have that the zero for like on Q that the zero cohomology um, of functions with respect to the induced BFV bracket uh, is isomorphic to this reduction. Um, but what is interesting that even like it, this is not always satisfied in, in, in many situations. Uh, of BV and even not for the AKZ model. So there's like a bigger space one, one finds there. Uh, so uh, this also may like may be one argument why the following part may not be completely stupid. So to, to find a kind of shortcut. So this AKZ is a shortcut for, um, for the BV formulation of some class of systems. So here, uh, suppose the class, we want a shortcut for B of V. Uh, excuse um, me. Um, yes. uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, may I ask a question about what you just said, uh, that sometimes uh, the zeroth cohomology is not the, uh, well, the, the, the algebra of the reduced uh, phase space. Uh, uh, what's, what's the relation in general? Is it bigger, smaller? It's bigger. So the zeroth cohomology is bigger. Yeah. So the, uh, the 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 ROI is always a subalgebra. So kind of the, you're kind of missing ghosts for ghosts of a global nature. Uh -huh. So it may be also interesting to to pursue this at some point. So, so somehow you have like colonomies uh, for non-trivial topologies, which um, actually this this applies also to you to, to 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 physical theories. But there it would be just like a finite number of degrees of freedom. However, in the AKZ is even worse because there are just a finite number of physical degrees of freedom. So that's yeah, really kind of bad. But whatever, maybe it's not, the point is maybe this condition is actually not so important. It is, has been sold as being like important. And I think in, in some sense it is and hope, and unfortunately in the end of the talk, I, I will show that we can satisfy it uh, in some construction, but the construction is also somewhat intricate. 
but so 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 such examples may may show us that maybe it's not the main main criterion. Certainly, there's no doubt about the equations one and two. That that's for sure. And they also, like this, should be an extension of age, and there also should be some more conditions, which are a matter of definition. So I will give some like construction in the end, uh, where I have uh, where I make this clearer. Okay, so now now let's come back to this uh, like um, shortcut. Uh, version for a, for a BFV for some uh, constrained systems, namely those coming from singular Riemannian foliations or singular foliations. So suppose you have a singular Riemannian foliation and they learn that we, this, in, this is like an equivalent notion to a particular type of a dynamical hypersome manifold. And one can try to construct uh, the BFV's formulation here, which will be part, which we will do later. But uh, on the other hand, we can um, look at the underlying uh, singular foliation and try to make use of the following theorem, uh, which we found some time ago. Namely, if, if you have a singular foliation and you assume that you have um, such a sequence of vector bundles, um, such that if you look at this uh, as a complex, no, uh, as uh, so this should be complex, but it induces also complex on this on the level of sections here. Then uh, used on the level of sections, it should be exact. And so in this in this sense, so you, you so in the image here should be certainly this F uh, on the level of sections. Uh, then uh, there is uh, a Lie infinity algebraic structure covering this. And uh, one way of saying this in kind of in the Weintraub spirit is that you uh, look at um, the great, so, so this E minus I you consider of uh, degree minus I or the functions of degree plus I on it and you take the, the product, you take this as a graded manifold. And then there exists um, a degree plus one vector field on it, which squares to zero. So that, that's one way of saying that this is a Lie infinity algebraid. Excuse now, me. Um, Excuse me, sorry. Uh, perhaps you, uh, uh, you should put the uh, I should put the star on on the product of uh, the product of the dual the dual bundles. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> um, uh, Thomas. Thomas. Yes. Uh, Thomas, ju just uh, hi. So this is ju just a remark. I think something some similar construction was uh, I think in the works of Lehovich and Sharapov some years ago. So you should just try to come uh, look at the papers and try to compare. Yeah, usually it's not like this. They always say it, but usually my experience is it, it, not really. No, true. it's, it's okay. my recollection. So uh, yeah. well, I, I cannot give you precise quotes, so, but my recollection is that uh, so they, they had some, something very close to, to what, what you're describing. So okay. perhaps not identical, but something close. So mm -hmm. it is worth comparing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea is now I have this graded manifold curly M. Uh, let's take the cotangent bundle of it and let's try it as being this uh, BFV symplectic phase space. So this is evidently symplectic. Uh, it has a degree zero symplectic form, which is even canonical in this case. And now there is a very nice candidate for this Q. You just take uh, this vector field Q on on, on M um, and uh, lift it to like take its Hamiltonian uh, on the cotangent bundle. So in particular, you get this condition that uh, the first master equation Q Q equals zero, which is this condition one and some other things you get absolutely for free without any work. So this is the analog of this um, AKZ idea where you, you, you by construction get the, the master equa equation satisfied. However, there, there are two problems. One is of the same sort as for AK set. So this property star does not always hold. In some cases it does, but in others it doesn't. And, um, but even worse, we have now a second master equation. This one that uh, HBFV and Q should uh, BFV commute with each other. And the existence of such an HBFV can be obstructed. And so with, with Sasha, we, we found a complex which governs this obstruction. 
And we also have very simple example, which shocked us in the beginning, uh, the, where, where, where this obstruction actually is, is, is there and cannot be removed. And this simple example is one I, I discussed already before a little bit. So we have R3 with rotations on it. And uh, so there's an action Lee algebraid, uh, this SO3 times M, and you take uh, the single affiliation, just the orbits of these rotations. So this, uh, to satisfy the condition in the, in the theorem with uh, Sylvain and Camille, uh, you, you need also uh, a rank one uh, uh, vector bundle in degree two, um, because you, you see that uh, these uh, generators of rotations, if you multiply them from left with x a, then this is automatically zero. So uh, there, there's a kernel and to, to remove, uh, to, 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 to make a complex, uh, I mean, a, a resolution on the level of sections, uh, you, you, you need to add like one element here. That, so the, in the physics, they, they will be called ghosts, eta and eta a, but it doesn't matter. They are degraded variables of degree two here, of degree one here. And uh, this map this map here would be given like that, and the map here like that, and the composition is evidently zero. And uh, then if you if you apply this uh, theorem, uh, okay, in this case, it's very easy like to do. Uh, you, you find this Li2 algebraid. So this infinity algebraid is a Li2 algebraid. There is uh, this, this usual term, but there's also some, some term taking care of these dependencies of these generators. So this is this Q on this graded manifold, um, which consists of E minus two times E minus one, essentially. So this is this graded manifold here. Here, this coordinates X, A, where of degree zero, uh, eta a of degree one, eta of degree two, eta a of three of them. And then you take the cotangent bundle, so you get the conjugate variables of so degree zero, minus one, minus two, respectively. And uh, you just take uh, the, uh, you, 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 you take the Meltonian to this. So this just means that you replace all derivatives by the corresponding momenta. So this, this is like, ah, there's an, uh, I changed notation. And I forgot this one here. Sorry, so, Thomas, do you mean the fibered product over the underlying manifold in the definition of script M? You, you took a product of vector bundles. Do you mean yeah, the fibered product? You're right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Very good. Yeah, it should be a tensor product otherwise. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, and so, so you just replace uh, this by, by, by P. Uh, so I just introduced the standard notation for angular momentum LA. So these are the constraints of the system. That's the first term. And uh, here you get the, the derivative with respect to eta becomes this momentum here. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you, you see some of the, usual conditions in the construction of uh, the BFV charge. So it starts with uh, the constraints multiplied by the ghosts, uh, has some of the, the structure constants in the game. And here you have some dependencies in the game. Uh, but uh, uh, in this case, uh, just for the standard metric, the, the BFV extension of H is, um, is obstructed. And uh, one reason behind this is that uh, actually, if one looks at these, these constraints, uh, at these like generators of the ideal, uh, they are essentially symmetric in X and P. And with this uh, dependency, you have an independent second one, which outside of the origin of, of the, the R3, they are equivalent. But if you, if you just work globally, um, this, this, this dependence is missed. So, in some way, you you, you get uh, you get dependencies, but the, if you think of the starting point, this this was a resolution um, of vector fields. So this is a module of functions on M, but actually we need a resolution of uh, these elements uh, over 
the model of T star functions on T star n. So if you you can do this in, in the case of the angle of momentum, and it actually also has just uh, two, two, two degrees, and it just amounts to introducing one more uh, degree two um, anti-ghost, how they are called, uh, with, with the boundary map uh, implementing this um, dependency. So this is a module resolution of this ideal generated by the angular momentum inside all in, in inside these functions. And we will use it later uh, in, in, in an honest construction. Um, but let, 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 let us first uh, tr try uh, an established approach, namely, so what one needs is um, um, a graded commutative algebra resolution, maybe it should be more graded commutative here of this I. And one very fast sees that this uh, is not yet it because, for example, in degree two, you have uh, these elements here, this pi by bar, but you can also look at quadratic elements in pi A. And uh, now you, you can ask, so look at elements which are closed. For example, this one turns out to be such an element. So um, it, it, it lives here and it's closed. So here, all of it, I should say. And, um, and then it would be a trivial cycle if it is the boundary of that one. But in general, it's not. And here, for example, these are three cycles which are non-trivial in that sense. And then you, you introduce some uh, new generators which just make them trivial. And this is causal date procedure. Um, so this, in principle, it, it, it's rather cumbersome. So, so we, we did it a little bit for this uh, angular momentum uh, case, and it's really at each. I mean, okay, maybe there are some super tricks, uh, but uh, it is it's, it's really a bit cumbersome. So, so even like the cohomology, uh, there are some elements which which again. Are, so, so you find the cohomology is slightly bigger than this one, but then as an O module, you can actually swallow part of it and so on. Um, but but it's at least cumbersome, but also it continues out for infinitely long in principle. So we, we, we calculated the first orders and uh, like the ranks were three, two, three, six, and it seemed to explode. Um, so, so at each level, you would introduce some, some new uh, O module or module or these functions, I mean, and uh, then you get like uh, some, some, some big um, complex and actually you should take the, the, the polynomials of this or as dot of it. Okay, so uh, now we, we found some, some other um, way of doing this very uh, explicitly. Um, and the setting is as follows. So th this probably can be used also in, 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 in not just in the application we have here in mind, but more generally. So suppose you have a commutative ring, for example, functions on a, on a Poisson manifold, or any manifold, or polynomials, or anything else. Take an ideal inside it, um, like in, in the here was like this angular momenta ideal, uh, and now assume that you have such a module resolution. So the image uh, of this map is the ideal I. And uh, if you add uh, over I and zero here, this becomes exact. Uh, and as mentioned already before, this always exists, for example, in such a situation. But this is our starting point. So we assume that, that this is given. And from this, we construct something similar to the causal date, but uh, in some way much better uh, uh, because starting from some degree related to this n, there is a homotopy. And uh, also the construction is, uh, is quite neat, I think. So let's, let's see how it works. So essentially this um, epsilon, which is not this causal date thing, but now this epsilon is consists of decorated planar trees uh, with some symmetry properties. And the decoration is by elements in the module. And let us look at it more precisely. So uh, look at 
uh, let, let's look here. So there, there you have like trees with, that, that's the root. There are two vertices that I, I put them here and they have four leaves, each of them. So this is this four here. You take the vector space generated by all such trees. And um, so this gives this vector space, you take the direct sum. So you get a huge vector space. K is always the number of vertices, which are at least three valent but uh, they are planar uh, trees and uh, n is the number of leaves. And now you decorate this by um, uh, n elements uh, in, uh, the, in the module. So this um, T hat now is a graded free O module. Um, it has also, it, it's graded because um, we define the grading as the number of internal vertices or like vertices as we call them, uh, and the degrees of the elements attached to each of the leaf. So this gives a, a, a degree, which actually turns out to be the resolution degree. And uh, these three still, we should uh, mod out some, um, some uh, symmetry properties essentially. So there's an equivalence relation. I want to show it in the, at the example of the angular momentum. So there uh, we just have um, a resolution of them as a module as just length two. So um, these leaves, they, they have just two colors essentially. So I put yellow and blue. Uh, and here, for example, this the yellow one, this, vec this module has degree one, this one has degree two. So the degrees here, for example, is one plus one plus one is three, but for each replacing uh, one yellow point by blue one, we add another degree. And now the, the symmetry relations are, for example, is such that if in such a simple situation, you say that um, uh, you, you have, if, if there's alpha i and beta j, which are in, a homogeneous element in these modules, then uh, if you exchange the two elements here, you get a sine factor. So you, you construct an ideal by such uh, an equivalence relation mod out by it. Uh, it's slightly more tricky in, in, in with, with bigger trees. For example, here, uh, here it's again as before. So this is just a sign, but if I I can also like make a flip, I mean, a symmetry around this vertex. And in, in that case, um, I, I need to take the degree of this one, which is I plus J plus one, because this has, the vertex also has degree one. So it's a kind of uh, permuting subtrees inside the big tree. And each tree has a degree and the corresponding degree appears here. Okay, so let's call this epsilon dot, this corresponding quotient uh, by such equivalence relation. And uh, these are like symmetrized decorated planar trees. And uh, then I can just take the graded symmetric algebra of that. So this S dot is, is again graded symmetric. And um, this is this graded symmetric tensor product. Now, uh, this means like just by the usual uh, graded symmetry properties if this um, induced by epsilon. And uh, so, so, so like each of this is a tree, so we get a forest now. So this is like one tree, another tree. So we have K trees. This is like a forest of K of this type of trees. Okay, so that is the, uh, the space we are working in. And now uh, about the definition of the boundary map delta, it has three contributions. Delta one, delta two, delta three. And then it's extended by the Leibniz rule to, to S dot. So I just can define it on epsilon. And I, I, I make it uh, by means of an example. So the first two parts are uh, kind of universal. So the first one is you remove one vertex. So if I remove, for example, this vertex, um, one tree turns into two trees. So this vertex disappears. So that's also why it has degree minus one as a map. And if I remove this vertex, actually removing means like fusing these two. So I get, I, I arrive at this tree and there are always signs and these signs can be defined with some paths in this 
tree and so on, but I don't want to go into this. There is a second part which uh, uses the boundary map in the module. So where just you apply this boundary map in the module to each of the elements in the leaf. Again, with some signs, I, I don't want to define here. And now there is one more tricky thing, uh, which is not canonical. So there, there are some maps Psi one needs to define. And uh, they are used for a third part, which is needed in this context, and which makes use of the fact that this module, this complex uh, is a resolution. And I, I will explain it at one simple case, namely for n equal two. So this applies only to subtrees. So if I, if I move up vertex by vertex and I arrive at a subtree above it, so descendant tree, which has a degree uh, bounded by this. So in the case for n equal two, it's something of degree three. And so the only one in this case is, is in the case n equal two is this one. So this, this already has degree one, it should be some, some non-trivial subtree. So we need uh, degree ones here. And in that context, um, I, 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 the, the third part uses a map psi applied to the subtree. And uh, this gives an element in, um, in the module. And in, in the present case, it's, it works as follows. So, um, so suppose you, you have alpha and beta inside M1. And um, right, and uh, now, now I can construct uh, such a map phi as follows. So I, I, I look at an element here, I apply delta. Delta on this was already defined. It's just a symmetric extension of this boundary map on, on each of them. Um, so I can map into here, but now this is a closed element, a partial closed element in here. So, but since this is a resolution, so I can apply again partial on this, it gives zero. So since it's a resolution, there isn't a pre-image here. It's not unique, but there exists one. So uh, take this one and then define uh, the image of this phi uh, as that element. And this gives this phi and um, and like how was it? So this psi is of degree minus one because you 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 lose a dot. So it also works correctly because this map phi was degree preserving, but uh, you lose a dot, so this becomes also degree minus one. And then uh, the theorem is that this is a resolution, so that means that at degree zero you get what you want, and at uh, higher degrees you get zero. Uh, this resolution is still not optimal. So for example, in the angle of momentum, we had three, two, three ranks, and then we had six here. So in this, with these trees, you find seven. Uh, so in principle, in general, one, one can think of uh, further, con uh, further maybe um, contractions of, of this uh, tree, of this uh, resolution in, in some particular cases, if one finds something of that sort. Uh, but it has a big advantage, which I mentioned already before. It has a homotopy. This homotopy is very easy to define. So it's a degree plus one map on these forests. And actually on a single tree, it's zero. And if I have several tree, I just put them into one tree. So th th that's all. This is this H. And um, so, for example, by, by this definition, it's very clear that H squares to zero. But this is not so important in this context. More important is that uh, on degrees bigger than this, this, this length of the module resolution, this becomes a homotopy. And that's, that's used in, in, in the SQL or can be used also there. So now uh, in the last part, uh, let me come back to uh, the BFV description of some hyperson uh, reduction. That actually, let us generalize it slightly. So let uh, O um, be a some Poisson algebra commutative. Uh, for example, functions on a Poisson manifold. I is some ideal, which is a Poisson sub algebra. They are probably this locally finitely generated. In general, cannot, one cannot say what it means. But let's leave it like this. And we assume we have this module resolution. We also have a Hamiltonian in the normalizer. Um, 
then the theorem we have is that there is a BFV description in the following sense. There is a graded commutative Poisson algebra, O BFV with a BFV bracket. There is a Q and an H BFV satisfying these two master equations. And uh, we get that the degree zero homology gives really these uh, reductions. And uh, there's an isomorphism of Poisson algebra and also this the corresponding equivalence classes of Hamiltonian degree. And that's the first part of the, of the theorem. And the second one is that actually, that, so th this is an existence part, but um, in an existence, you need to do similar things like with this map Psi before. So there's there exists something, but then at a high enough level, you can always use the previously constructed homotopy to get recursive formulas. So there's some like, recursive uh, construction or like uh, some recursive uh, definition of Q and HPFV starting from some order. So, so, yes? I have a question. So in this theorem, there's some sort of uh, finite generativeness assumption? No, up to now, no. No, it's more general, so. So the modules can be infinitely generated? The modules uh, in the so. Yeah, I, I may be wrong. So, uh, but um, so and this is a kind of uh, quite uh, warm still. Uh, so I, I, I think, yeah, I, I want to check maybe the details. Okay, um, so maybe it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, I, I, I need to think about the proof. So we proved it like two weeks ago or three. Um, so yeah, I, I, okay, Thanks, let's hope it, it, it is true as written. Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. So, so what? Uh, 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 what is the hypothesis? I think it, it, it's like this because it's a very algebraic proof, and uh, I, I think it just it's just like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what is the hypothesis of uh, of your theorem? Could you backtrack a bit? Uh, that one. Okay, so so uh, is, uh, the, the, hypo the hypothesis is, is that uh, uh, is that uh, um, I has this finite uh, resolution. Yes. Uh, and is there yes. any assumption on these modules, like they're they're free or projective? Yeah, that may well be. I'm sorry, I'm, this is not my speciality. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I don't see such assumptions at the moment, but uh, of course the proof is, 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 is rather algebraic, but okay, um, let, let, that's, uh, let's, let's, let, I don't know, I, I kind of, the time is kind of over. I still have like- You know, I just, just wanted to know the, the assumptions for, but- Yeah, yeah. so that, that is what I wrote at least. Um, so there are still like three, four pages. I don't know, the chairman is-, is um, uh, in you can take a few more minutes. Yeah, yeah. you can take a okay. few more minutes. Okay, so let, let, let me just explain a little bit of uh, this construction, how, how you get this face pay, this BFV um, uh, description. So, so, and I will just do it in the case where you have a Poisson manifold P. So just in this, in this setting we had before, uh, at least there the theorem is for sure true, but I think it should be true more generally. Um, and uh, so, so how, how do we get this MP3 with uh, uh, its um, bracket? Actually, it will be only Poisson uh, manifold uh, grade, but not, not even symplectic. So um, we, we first, we start with this uh, resolution uh, of this ideal and uh, let's call RI the rank of this uh, epsilon i's in the resolution. And then uh, the, the BFV phase space is just a product of the Poisson manifold and the code dungeon bundle of these uh, resolution ghosts or anti fields with its canonical bracket. So this is a, a graded a symplectic manifold and this is a Poisson manifold. And so both are Poisson manifolds. And so the product is again, a Poisson manifold. Certainly everything should be said algebraically in the end, but this gives the idea. Uh, so this is just a product of two Poisson manifolds. So this kind of nice, simple construction, very explicit. Um, 
usually in the BFV, this, these are the ghosts and these are the anti ghosts. So normally one would like to think of them in the other way around. These are the, 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 the fiber linear coordinates, but here they come out like that. And uh, the degrees are such that they are now of degree minus i, these goals. So before this resolution degree was positive, but we want to flip this around to get it's not a homology, but a cohomology. Um, and in, in, the, in the notations uh, used in physics, these are the goals, these are the anti ghosts and there they introduce degrees separately for them so this like ghost degree anti ghost degree which is the same as the resolution degree because we can identify these generators here with the generators of this resolution epsilon this algebraic resolution and the total degree is now like that's this minus sign because of this flip which i mentioned to get a cohomology so this is um this is uh, how, how to get this OBFV with its bracket. So this one. Now, uh, to give an idea of uh, the construction of the BFV charge. Um, so, right. So uh, maybe I should still make some re remark before. So uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this resolution of, of this ideal, this bracket never appeared. So there will be some, some point where, where this bracket uh, needs to enter the game and uh, this will be in Q. Um, so I can view, MBFV was this product space. So I can view it as a, as a, a trivial bundle over this Poisson manifold where the fiber is a cotangent bundle over this uh, space of this anti-ghosts pi. And uh, delta, what I had before, um, I, I can view it as like in this bundle here, uh, where, where F is now again, just uh, this, um, I mean, th 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 this is something like epsilon, what, what was epsilon before. And I, I view this as such a bundle, it's a vertical vector field. And uh, the fiber here now is a cotangent bundle. So I can fiber-wise take a Hamiltonian so I wrote it in some coordinates here, and then there's this the Hamiltonian. I call this delta lin. So this is a function on MBFV. And um, maybe it's a bit fast now, but let me just continue having given this idea. So um, the main point is that this Q now has to start with delta lin. Lin means because it's linear in this ghosts eta. And there are terms quadratic or higher in ethers, which we are permitted to add. And uh, now it's the time when this bracket enters. So if this bracket is zero, then we, we don't need these extra terms. Then everything actually, you see, then there's no, there's no uh, distribution to be factored out on this uh, quasitropic submanifold. And uh, the cohomology will just give the, the ideal back. This, I mean, this, this resolution of this quotient by the ideal. And uh, so, so in that case, uh, Q just can be delta lin because the BFV bracket of that Q with itself is just this fiber bracket. And then this because delta squared to zero and this was just the Hamiltonian lift fiber wise, this is zero already. And uh, for, for some tautological reasons, you get also the right resolution there. But if you turn on the bracket, we get uh, some extra terms coming from that bracket if you take the BFV bracket of Q with itself. And these terms are supposed to kill those extra terms. And uh, so, so, so to prove this existence of this Q, uh, one step is to go back to this delta hat, which is the Hamiltonian vector field of these linear functions with respect only to this fiber-wise uh, symplectic structure, you can decompose it with respect to the anti-ghost number, take its lowest part, and that turns out to be more or less uh, this uh, resolution delta we had before, and it's acyclic. And then uh, in these uh, higher terms, you make a decomposition with respect to this um, anti-ghost number, and uh, by perturbation lemma, you, 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 you prove existence. 
And actually, it's a necessary condition in this procedure. You also find that I needs to be um, a Poisson subalgebra. And uh, the other thing is that in high enough uh, uh, degrees in this anti-ghost number now, we can use the homotopy H and get recursive formulas. And the, 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 the last, this HPV starts with H, you get some contributions of increasing uh, anti-ghost number and uh, the construction is quite similar. And also the homotopy appears at sufficiently high degree. And so I just posted again the theorem and thank you for your attention. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks for the nice talk. Are there more questions? There were already quite a few. Um, may I? Um, sure. Uh, Yes, so uh, uh, Thomas, you mentioned the uh, uh, optimality uh, that, uh, you know, that certain resolutions are or are not optimal. Um, so what, uh, yeah, what would optimal uh, be? No, this causal date, right, is optimal. There you just it calculate cohomologies and you add only what is needed. Oh, so uh, uh, okay, but that's yeah. That this so because you'll take this optimal, and this thing you're constructing um, uh, is generally larger, like has, has larger. More, more generators in each. Degree. Right. Like, so so sometimes you you will be able to to con to contract it. So in in the case of the angular momentum, it's still not so bad. And the main point is you get a big advantage. You get now a homotopy. Actually, you can prove that at lower degrees there is no homotopy. It doesn't even exist. But like enlarging this, uh, you, you, you get this homotopy for free, which just means homotopy is very nice. Like it's just gluing tree forest into one tree. So it has a nice um, diagrammatic interpretation. Yeah, there, there was some, uh, yeah, some work that I, uh, that I read some time ago by Luchasar Avramov. Uh, I, it was actually investigating the question of, uh, of, 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 of this type of resolutions. So mm -hmm. he was working in the context of, I think, of Noetherian local rings. And uh, this context, the context is very, you know, these rings here are very far from Noetherian. And uh, if I understood uh, uh, correctly what, the, you know, what, what, what he did there is that uh, I found a dichotomy uh, for such resolutions. So either, either the kazoo uh, algebra that you construct, the kazoo complex is already a resolution or otherwise uh, the number of generators uh, uh, it, it indeed grows exponentially as, uh, as a function of, uh, of, 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 of degree. Okay. Uh, so which is, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that, uh, you know, it, if those results apply in uh, you know in this context, but uh, that was uh, yeah, I, I thought it was uh, somewhat unfortunate that uh, you couldn't uh, you know I mean uh, un unless you the Kazoo complex already gives you the right thing, uh, you, you do not you will not have a finite uh, you know free resolution you know of your algebra. Uh, So optimal is this essentially that you're getting a minimal resolution? Um, let me see if I can, I would like to, uh, Jim. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, optimal would mean like in this causal state, the principle, you can make it optimal. So you just added each degree, next degree, what you really need. Yeah. So actually, if you calculate the cohomology, what we did, so even you find some things, it's slightly tricky because in the cohomology, there can be some two different elements, which actually then as an O module, you can generate one from the other. So actually in that sense, you can, like if you reduce at each level in that sense, you just take the minimal number of generators, then um, you, 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 you can find, you can define some minimal. So I think there's nothing below that. And for example, for the angular momentum, I don't know if one can prove that, uh, that for example, it has to be infinite, uh, not, not so clear, but I would expect it. I mean, like looking at the numbers, uh, it does seem to explode. A three, two, three, six, and then like something 15 or so. But they're like these calculations are even kind of cumbersome. 
and uh, infinitely many of them are needed, that's even bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I got a, a, another question. So you, you mentioned that at some point you were making this choice of the map phi. Yeah. But then I haven't quite understood how does it influence the whole thing? It is Delta. So, Delta depends on it. Yeah, but the, the, the different choices are equivalent and equivalent in some way or what, what, what about Delta's built from different choices for phi? Yeah, but they give both resolutions, so they're quasi-isomorphic, right? Okay. Uh, and then maybe another question. I, I'm not sure how uh, well I can formulate it, but you, you have those trees and forests, uh, and usually right such things you get from different sources, maybe from some solution of a nonlinear equation, right? Something. Is it uh, either those, uh, those constructions in this case do they have some interpretation or like? I have no idea, but uh, it, 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 it's an intriguing picture of it. Actually, we had found originally uh, with Sasha some, some, some version where there were no trees, and this was the, the main input from Camille to reformulate it with trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But it's beautiful, I, I agree, and uh, it's inspiring. So one, one, I mean, it would be nice to understand further, so, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there more questions? I don't see any raised hand. Okay, so maybe we should thank Thomas again. Okay, thank you. All right. So I hope to see everyone next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.